The other day there was a brilliant speech by Mr. Biden, who clearly stated that in fact supporting Ukraine is the price that the world must pay, must definitely pay in order to live in a predictable world. That is, in a world where there are rules, where there is international law, where there is a convention and so on. If this price is not paid, then tomorrow this world will not exist, and tomorrow the world that the Russian Federation wants to build, which has already built such, let's say, the basis of a terrorist alliance. The alliance of evil will dominate, and this world will be dominated by violence, murder, absolutely no rules, chaos, and so on and so forth. Therefore, it seems to me that this speech by Mr. Biden very clearly puts emphasis, the right emphasis in this war. That is, it is clearly stated that Ukraine must definitely win and Russia must definitely lose. And accordingly, again, for this, you are absolutely right. You need to increase the volume of military assistance based on the resources that Russia has. And Russia, by the way, is also looking around the world whether is can. North Korea, for example, is looking for additional shells and so on. This suggests that sanctions should be more sensitive, more stringent. There is no doubt that Russia needs to be isolated from global, fairly global economic markets in which Russia is still present. That accordingly informational and diplomatic work needs to be done more intensively so that this position, let's say absolutely disgusting position of Russia, is is understood to all countries, not only those that are part of the pro-Ukrainian coalition, but also in a broader context. Well, it is important, of course, to understand that Russia in this form, if it continues to exist, will attract countries with regimes that are geared towards aggression. We see it in the Middle East, we see on the African continent what is happening and it will only scale up. In fact, control over the supply of heavy equipment is extreme. Control and online control and directly on site and so on. Our partners taking into account the fact that today it is possible to track any large military instrument, meaning large scale military instrument in any place where it is located. Using remote monitoring systems, direct monitoring systems, online monitoring and so on. That is, in this regard, my partners and I have an absolutely clear system, I emphasize once again, of tracking where which military instrument transferred to us by our partners is located. And that's why, in fact, no one reacts to these statements. Hamas is a rather primitive propaganda technology that is used by the Russian Federation. All that we see today in the Middle East and a little earlier in Africa is a direct continuation of that, let's say, war that Russia started against the global world order, against the fundamental rights of life in the modern world by starting a war in Ukraine. Undoubtedly, the root cause of everything is that we see growing chaos, a growing abundance of conflicts at different levels. This is a war in Ukraine. It is, of course, the root cause of everything. And accordingly, if we want to stop the growing wave of escalation in different regions, then, of course, we need to remove the primary cause, remove the Russian Federation. And, by the way, I mean removing the political system that dominates Russia today. It is necessary to send Russia to transformation. What is important here, we are no longer the only ones who understand this. Many of our partners will once again refer to Mr. Biden's speech, where it is clearly stated that the primary cause is Russia. And accordingly, in order for us to return to certain rules, to a certain predictability, to a certain stability, we need to to continue supporting Ukraine in every sense of the word informationally, diplomatically, consultatively and, most importantly, militarily. Well, financially, of course, so that Russia loses this war.